All right, and welcome everybody to Pokemon Speedrunning Podcast, uh, Season 2, Episode 11. Um, as always, I'm one of your hosts. My name is Etiquette, and with me are other hosts, Iron. Hello. And Jordan97. Hello. And this month, uh, we have a very special guest, um, new newcomer to the Pokemon speedrunning scene, uh, Oh Snap. Hello, hello. All right, so um, we got a lot of talk, a lot to talk about this month. Um, so we definitely want to dive into it. Um, biggest thing right off the bat is uh, we finally have the Legends Arceus uh, leaderboards up. Um, last month the game had come out, but we didn't have the leaderboards up yet. So now the boards are up. Uh, tons of runners on the boards. Um, you know, we've got any percent on the main leaderboards. We have a thriving category extensions board. Um, it's really, really good to see. Um, and we've actually already had changes to the leaderboard with uh, some timing changes. So the traditional Pokemon way of starting at language select and ending right before credits um, has been voted to uh, be a little bit different, um, basically starting on character select rather than on language select and starting on, or character confirmation, I should say, um, and then ending um, a little bit before the uh, the credits just because there's like a big cut scene right before the credits that we're just not going to include anymore. So um, yeah, I, I guess that's that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, the, the boards have been up for a little while, so you can go check them out. Uh, lots of runners on there, so it's uh, really cool to see. Um, and with that, I guess, Iron, you want to take it away with the first of the notable runs? Yeah, so we only have one run from the Gen 1 to 3 this month, and it's a pretty big one. Uh, Wave Warrior getting the world record, the two, first 229 in Emerald, any percent glitchless. Um, I didn't watch this run, it was like really late in my time, I, but I did watch a few of the, uh, the notable bits. Um, most notably here is he got Sweet Scent from Tropius. So this Tropius almost always will kill you. Um, and you revive with a rare candy and then you heal for Winona. But in this case, he got Sweet Scent, which is quite rare. Um, so you didn't have to worry about doing the revive and bringing in Cast Form to finish off the Tropius. Um, so he saved quite a bit there. And uh, the HP was really solid as well. Uh, and then the, the end was very, very interesting. Uh, as well, if you want to fast forward to that, uh, to, to the wall fight. Let's get to the right point. So as, yeah, as you can see here, he's about 20 seconds off of record. He, I'm not sure which um, Rayquaza he had here, but he um, really needed Blizz misses. He got one there. Um, that's pretty hype to get one, but he also gets a second one here. So... Um, Really, really crazy um, to knock that out um, and not take any damage. And then I'm not sure exactly, again, which Rayquaza he was on. So if anyone in chat wants to, to point that out, I'm not too familiar with the different, uh, how the different strats go for each one, but he needed to hit, get a three turn outrage without getting confused. Uh, pretty much needed that at the end to get record. Um, so it's 50 50 to get confused and then i think it's is it 75 percent to not hit to 70 percent to hit through or something like that so if he didn't get the three turn or even if he had gotten the two turn and hit through confusion that even that might not have been enough so and then if he had hit himself it would have been it would have been over at that point so um wave ash is in the chat saying the quiet one okay great thank you but yeah, really, really close in the end. Um, really good ending, and um, really good to see uh, that barrier finally get blitzed. Even though barrier blitzed was a few was a little while a little while ago now, but we have we had a few lot of runners um, really pushing hard for that uh, for that two twenty nine. So congrats to Wave for that. Great I'm run. just I'm just gonna point out this is now two for two for people who have won barrier blitz and then got the world record like after the fact. Yeah. I'm just tr like, the trends there. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But also, just the, the amount of like, 
I don't, does it actually show in it? Well, I mean, you won't be able to hear it, but yeah. There's all the, like, the subs and stuff. It's just constant. Is it Finland or something? I just saw, like, that the chat after would just be filled with, like, Finland and stuff because of, like, the alerts. Which I just found funny, but... <sighs> like, that, that's... I, that's the, oh, that's the, like, for some reason, that's the thing I take away from all this. Not the fact that this is the first sub-230. Just the amount of, like, Finland and stuff that came up. But anyway, moving on to uh, Pokemon Platinum. Uh, Iron, do you want to take this as well? <laughs> oh, you uh, ah, yeah, I can. I didn't. Uh, I didn't watch this one either. But I, I we do have some notes, obviously, <laughs> to to go yeah. over here. So this is uh, this is Worcester, um, getting a pretty nice little world record in Platinum any percent, so the glitched category. And this is a pretty notable run, as you can see here, he goes for, a, gets a Golduck. Um, so the old route used two Tentacruels, or Tentacruels, um, and one of them was level 40, one of them is level 50. In this, in this run, he doesn't go for the level 40, he goes for the Golduck instead. But what's, in, what's more notable about this run compared to the old route is that he needed to pretty much keep Manip all the way up to getting the Golduck. Um, which is, as you can see, almost an hour of gameplay. Uh, and obviously, if you drop it, you can't get the Golduck. Whereas the old run, I believe, would do a save and quit Manip for the uh, for the first Tentacruel. He has to do a save and quit for the for the second for the second Tentacruel, I believe. But there's a little bit of time save in, in not having to do save and quit, and a few other a uh, few other uh, little things as well. Uh, which is really nice. Uh, both of the Tentacruel and the Golduck were first uh, first ball catches. And obviously it was the first try catch for the Golduck because he needed to get it first try. And um, fights went really well in general uh, as well. So uh, pretty solid run. Uh, not sure what the previous record was, but it was, it was about a minute faster, I'd say. Um, I don't know if anyone has the leaderboard on hand, but I can pull that up. Uh, I mean, he's, technically, but he's comparing to his he's comparing to his PB there. PD. So I... This is why I have to press. Oh no, that was a bit too far back. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, we have a little nosy O snap. The two forty, two forty forty nine by Scoa, Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's about a minute and a minute and change. Yeah, improve it almost two minutes. So. Actually, two minutes and prove it. So that's really, really solid time for that. Uh, this is, I think, he had been thinking about doing this for a while and and and, and hypothesizing this category, and uh, it's, uh, finally figured out that it was faster. So congrats to Worcester on this great run. And then I'll just chip in with this bit. Uh, Dexy Platinum any percent glitchless uh, Japanese world record three twenty fifty seven. I forgot to put notes for this, uh, but when I was skimming through this, the reason why I've highlighted this bit, this seems to be like the kind of like the area where there seems to just be a bit of time loss. Other than that, it seems to be like a very solid run compared to the previous PB. Um, I think it was just, I think it was just a bit of unfortunate luck overall. Still though, uh, congrats to Dexy with this run too. So that one was with that. Uh with Piplop as well, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if the Ooh. Japanese run uses um, <laughs> any of them use Chimchar or not. But or am I thinking of am I thinking of Diamond and Pearl? I don't actually remember. <laughs> it's hard to remember. Uh, I think Platinum think... uses either or. If only yeah, we Platinum, had you can use either of them. Um, okay. There's been there's a hot debate as to which one's faster. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Scoa, the, the DS experts. <laughs> but then, I think Etiquette, you'll be a bit. Have you done Ultra Moon actually, Etiquette? I don't. I imagine you. I have I... not. Um, but I can. I can definitely talk a little bit about this. Um. So of course, highlighting here the. Uh, oh well, I guess first of all, this is the Pokemon Ultra Moon current uh, record for the old 3DS. Um, by Wartab. Uh, this is uh, probably one of the worst spots to highlight. Um, died to a 1 in 16 crit, so it was a... It needed to crit, and it needed to get the 1 in 16 max roll, so it's like 1 in 380... Uh, wait, we have it written here. 384. 
chance overall to die there. Um, and he, he would have survived if he remembered to use the iron earlier in the run, which is a little bit of an unfortunate, but um, overall, pretty solid run. Um, this beat the old um, record for old 3DS by a few minutes. Um, I think Pulse still had it at a, like a 5.56, I think, um, something around there. Um, but yeah, th this is a really cool run. Um, the other notable thing is this gives officially gives Wartab the sweep for Alola games. Um, so he has the Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, old 3DS and new 3DS records for each of the games, which is really cool. That's not really been done before. Is he? He's still tied with Ringo, isn't he, for one of them? Which I mean, it's still yeah, classes as a sweep. Still world record. Yes, Sun Moon new 3ds i believe is still a tie between him and ringo all right and then also you mentioned pulse pulses was one of the oldest as well one of the oldest standing world records left yep so quite cool to see one of those get taken down there's not too many more at this point from before 2020. yeah there's really not <laughs> so then moving on to the switch and um yeah so yeah. this is uh jash 4 coming back uh took a bit of a break and came back and this is the brilliant diamond any percent record um or any percent glitch list i should say record uh 321 48 so this is um about two minutes off the shining pearl record at the moment um but this is still a really solid run um this is, again, Jordan doing a really good job of highlighting the worst part. Um, this was uh, hitting an optional right here after Mars 1. Um, this is... Hitting optionals in this game is very bad if it's in the first hour and a half. Um, because of the way that you have to use uh, the traded Kadabra, the experience on Kadabra is super important. Um, and if you over-level a little bit then you have you run into disobedience issues so um definitely a, a scary bit to um uh, or a scary thing to hit an optional there but uh ended up working out did have a bit of an issue on wake uh where he missed the 15 and 16 shockwave range um but ended up getting through the fight and then other notable thing is um on cyrus had a very weird cyrus fight where he uh got the the Gyarados ended up switching out rather than KOing the Chimchar, which just wastes a bit of time and can be a little scary, so um so yeah, so this is the the missed range here on Crasher Wake. It's not a very pleasant range to miss, for sure. This fight has a lot of moving pieces, and if any of them go wrong, it's usually pretty bad. But I was able to get through it just fine. Where's where's Cyrus approximately? That I think I'm in. Uh, two forty ish. This... Oh wait, no. This yeah. Is okay, cool. Yeah, this you're, is it. You're close there. Right, two thirty. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I mean, uh, in the reverse part, definitely does not help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um. Yeah, it's another. Yeah, so I think we saw who who was it that was had reverse colors before? Was it? It was one of the it, Japanese Ringo. runners. Ringo, yeah. Yeah, not many other people do it, so it's kind of interesting. I, it doesn't help me at all. So, no. Um, but yeah, so uh, basically, the way this fight's supposed to go is you KO the Honchcrow, you deal about half damage to the, the Gyarados, and then switch into Monferno, uh, and you max revive on this turn. Um. And what's supposed to happen is Gyarados KOs Monferno, so you go back in with um, the Kadabra, but ended up getting the switch out instead. Um, actually got very lucky in that he accidentally max revived uh, Monferno, which did nothing if you actually... I didn't realize that. So if he had actually been targeted by the Gyarados, the run would have been over. Um, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so that's actually very lucky that it, it, it switched out like that. Um, yeah, now the it's not the best fight, 
now, but um, this is this ends up being fine. Um, opted to go for next speed there instead of next defense. Interesting. You have to worry about getting uh, or risk getting quick clawed if you do it this way, but that's fine. It ended up working out, so clearly it was the right choice. <laughs> yeah, it's only ten percent. You deal with much worse in Pokemon runs. Very true. Uh, <laughs> but then I would say the the main biggest thing from this month, Lanzarius. This is how or how cruise. Any percent world record with a four oh three thirty one in the background. Um, oh snap! Like how? Well, that's off. Uh, how have you found this game? Like, I, I assume you've been enjoying it. Yeah, um, <laughs> this it's a fun game. It's very interesting. Again, I, again, not having experience in other Pokemon games, it's got a very weird sandwich to it where there's a lot of meat in the middle and there's a little bit of, you know, some duller parts on the beginning and the end. Um, so I, again, I, I think it's a like a really fun game that has just like a lot of action in the middle um, part of it, which. Uh, it leads to like a lot of variance in time and things like that. And again, part of this is route change. But you can even see from like how it splits. Like he's, I think that's like four minutes behind. Uh, you know, part of that's like routing stuff, but that stuff happens. And then you'll make back like a minute or two later. Um, I just think it's probably a little bit higher of a variance compared to other Pokemon runs. Yeah, yeah. Let's go would be the next closest I think in terms of variance like that. But... Yeah, for sure. Or Leap or Round Two in Fire Red, Leap Green. I also I like the comparison with like I'll just say I'll, I like how you mentioned that there's a lot of like you say like a lot of meat in the middle and it's kind of like bookended by kind of like weaker bits I guess and that that actually seems that might at least to me that's very similar to Sword Shield and is that maybe just like a common True, thing with yeah. the Pokemon Switch speedruns at this point? Oh yeah, I, I think it's it sort of has to do with the formula of. Like, let's give as much of a tutorial at the start as we can. Um, and then the end of the game is where it's like all the story stuff happening all at once. Um, I think this game has it a little bit different just because of like the main mechanic for progression in the game is like the research tasks and stuff. And you just don't have to do that for the last hour, hour and 15 minutes. So it, uh, it ends up being a very different game for the last part of it. Yeah, and like with the focus being around research points, like how did you like? Well, I guess from the very beginning, how did you decide to like narrow it down? Up? And then as it goes well, because you have your own route, don't you? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, um, I mean, for me, a lot of the times I just time. I think of each mon as having their own time uh, in terms of like this mon's about a minute to complete research, or one's about fifty seconds. And then you generally kind of piece it together, right? obviously including like movement to it. Um, and then you get close to something as optimal. Like some of them just kind of work out better in terms of um, they're more reliable uh, than others. So sometimes they might have like a little bit more priority in that regards. Um, but yeah, and it just kind of evolves because you, you know, play it and you realize, wait, we're just forgetting about this Mon who's actually pretty good. And if we do, you know, these things and it actually turns out to be a little bit faster than another one. So there's a lot of things that just kept evolving in terms of replacing one thing for another that honestly maybe saves like five to 10 seconds, right? But you're just like, well, it's free five to 10 seconds. So you do the swap um, and things along that line. Like, how different is that compared to how you were around the etiquette? Um, like, cause you've been doing a lot. Like, you've been playing Pokemon for years at this point and routing for years at this point. Yeah, I, I think I sort of looked at it a lot like Let's Go um, in that one of the things, and I, I've noticed this looking at other people's routes now, that I had such a hard, t I, I actually still have a hard time grasping, is the idea, so the way that the research tasks work, um, you basically get points for every like research level, quote unquote. And then if you hit research level 10, you get an extra 100 points. So you can basically think of each Pokemon, or I guess where I'm going with this is, I'm thinking of each Pokemon as being worth 200 points. Um, Cause you get the 10 points per research task and then the extra 100. Um, but there's really a lot of value in either, you know, 
doing fast things that either over complete something or partial complete something. Um, I, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking of it more like Let's Go, where it's like, with Let's Go, you have to catch 50 Pokemon. And with this, I'm trying to complete 40 Pokemon because it like roughly adds up point wise to what you need in the end of the game. Um, and I'm almost like stubborn in a way to not deviate from those 40. Um, and I end up going for things that are a little bit safer and they might be a little take a little bit longer. But like if you look at the leaderboards, you can see where that sort of falls apart. Um, given that my time is now over 10 minutes away from the top. So it's um, it's a really interesting game. Um, I think the analogies with Let's Go are valid in that, you know, it's very different from run to run. Um, and you really have to think on your, on your feet a lot throughout the game. Um, but it's probably, you know, it's, it's Let's Go, but more complicated. You're not just catching 50 Pokemon. You have all of these other things to worry about. Um, and it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's so much that there's so much to keep track of too. How do you guys like remember everything? You have like trackers or like documents that you kind of consult to keep an eye on like which research tasks you've completed for which mons? Because some of them are worth more than others. So you obviously want to aim more for certain tasks. Uh, I'm just weird, and I actually just memorize like most of the decks. So I don't have anything. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just do. It. Right. Yeah, I just routed my head on the fly. But uh, I think that there's some documents. I know Etik uses a, a tracker a little bit. I think you're probably the only one who's using a tracker right now. Maybe like one other person has started using. But mm -hmm. um, I know Helk has a document he keeps um, up to date. Again, not sure how much he uses it actually during the run. Um, you'll see when he turns in his tasks, I know Helk does a little bit of checking on his decks to just to make sure. Um, like he'll just, when you turn in research in this game, yeah. the professor shows your, what you're turning in. I know Helk likes to scroll through like once just to make sure that he sees the Pokeball symbol next to everything he expects to see. Um, so that's kind of his double checking. Yeah. yeah. I, I will actually point out with this, the reason I like the first bit that I highlighted, that was actually where Helk. I guess most of them miscalculated it because he ends up getting 8,490 when you need 8,500 for the final area or final star. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, one's really weird. So like Etiquette was saying, there's a lot of partial stuff. Um, so sometimes you, like if you add up the Pokemon you actually get, most people are aiming for like 39, which if you just do 200 times 39 would not get you that. Um, so there's just a lot of times where it's like, oh, I should have just did this one tiny thing like if i just caught this one pokemon i ran past i would have been fine um and stuff like that so hitting like 84 90s is actually not that uncommon in this game unfortunately yeah <laughs> it's um yeah i i mainly use the the tracker to like identify which uh which pokemon i still either like need to complete um because i early on not so much anymore just because like I mean, the route's changing pretty... My route's changing pretty much every day, but, like, the guts of it are probably the same. Um, but, like, I would have issues where, like, I'm short on research tasks because I didn't evolve APOM, for example. Because uh, I'm not using APOM in battle, but I'm evolving it for the extra tasks. Um, so I'm, I use the tracker mostly. It'll be like, all right, I've started this Pokemon, I've completed this Pokemon, and then by the end of the, you know... By the end of the third area, I'm really using it to be like, all right, I'm expecting to have 33 Pokemon completed, and I only have 32 listed. Like, something went wrong. Or maybe I have 34. Because one of the other problems I have, especially uh, going into the last area, is I'll think... Like, I'll look at my point count and how many Pokemon I've got completed, or I think I have completed, and be like, okay, I should be fine if I just complete out the rest of the Pokemon. But maybe I happened to get like an extra small specimen on something and actually have already completed it. Um, so I'm not going to be able to get that extra 100 bonus points. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's obviously a lot of RNG with it. Um, I think it's, you know, it's still relatively new. Like, obviously, these times are incredible. Yeah. I think if anybody had said that would be pushing on the sub four, you know, within the first, like, if anyone had said at the end of the first month we'd be pushing sub four um, during the first week, I would have said they were lying. 
Um, yeah, it seemed a lot longer when it was released, for sure. Yeah, but I think I think this game has a lot of a lot of room to grow still. Um, I mean, there was I, I think the, they were talking about it in your stream last night, Snap. But like, there's even some new route changes potentially in the works, like literally as new as yesterday. So oh, the the really weird stuff. That stuff probably doesn't work. Well, it's I, I don't think so. you can you yeah. can make it. Ab I think you can make it about <laughs> the same speed, but it's just for fun. I think <laughs> if yeah. you want to do something totally different, you can go for that. But yeah, but no, no, it still definitely changes. Like there's some stuff even today. Um, I was talking with like Saiyan on um, that. There's probably some small things that to change from what Hulk did in his run. Um, definitely sub four is probably I would say sub four probably happens within the next two weeks um at the very latest and then who knows from there oh because like uh with this run this uses sneasel which i'll i saw was like saying it's like oh the claim is like one oh, maybe i'm being a bit hyperbolic here the claim is like one of the greatest things for end game is it actually because i think i saw you kind of combine that a bit snap yeah, so it is definitely the fastest. Um, it looks ex like from his splits, it looks like insane. But he also in his PB that he's going against, he lost like three and a half minutes at end game. So it looks like it saves him like five minutes. Uh, it does probably save like a minute, a minute and a half at the end game. Um, just because you get when you catch those Sneasels in Highlands, they're like way higher level than anything you can level up yourself. Because if you level something naturally throughout the game, it ends up at like 42 to 44 ish level depending on how much it dies in fights since this game you trade pokes a lot more than other pokemon games um and you don't get the xp until the end of the fight in this um so when you catch the sneezel it's like mid 50s so it's just way higher than anything you have and it starts by learning close combat which is just one of the highest base power moves in the game so and fighting is just a really good type um for this game in the end all right oh, wow. I didn't realize that the experience has up at the end until you just mentioned that. I, I never realized that. Yeah, so it's really brutal in a game where you constantly trade pokes because half your team will just not get the XP for the fight <laughs> because they're dead. It's, yeah, because you go through a few in fights, right? Like sometimes you like, like one poke will take out the first mon in the fight and then it'll faint to the second one. Yeah. <laughs> that's not getting yep. the experience at all, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That is rough. Oh, actually, as well, because this has a slightly different battle system. How is the, how are the fights typically done in this? I should probably find the fight section as well, wasn't it? But how are um, they typically done? Yeah, so fights usually, again, are a lot of trading and just making sure you have things that as a super effective move to either one shot um, or at the very least kind of can get like a double move in. So pretty much every fight you're looking to one shot your opponent in one turn because of the, the turn system. Sometimes you can get two for like a good example is like on Kamado at the very end, Snorlax uses Giga um, punch, which is re lowers his turn order. So you get like two free turns, you know, for that a way to one shot him there. Or in this fight, again, you're using just Gastrodon, which just one shots pretty much everything that comes out here. Um, there's very few times where you actually can survive a turn from the opponent. So a lot of it's just making sure your team always has an answer for the next few Pokemon that you see from trainers, which are honestly not a whole lot because this game goes way lower on trainer battles than most other games. Um, and in fact, more recently, also, it's part of this uh, Halk's run. And I think he doesn't even do it as much as I think is probably going to be happening in the next couple of weeks is you can actually lose a lot of fights and the game progresses pretty much any fight that's in Jubilife, uh, you can lose and the game will just be like, okay, good enough. You can continue. Um, so oh, there's awesome. maybe I'm trying to even think there's probably like six or seven trainer fights that you actually have to win. This is not actually a whole lot. Maybe that's a little bit low, but I think it's less than 10 for sure. Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually. Yeah, I think I think I, I think I saw that in, in in I think it was I was watching a bit of Halk's run. I think so he, I saw him purposely lose. He was setting out like a Bidoof against the Leafeon or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's yeah, another like, thing that Ooh. came from uh, um, Tarashi, who is a Japanese runner who also came with the Sneasel. Um, he did that for a few fights. Um, I think Zambi was the first one to find that you can lose any of them. To he found one in Cobalt Coast, like the first uh, Aruda fight there. 
Um, and it just turns out pretty much anytime you're fighting someone who's quote unquote good, you can lose and it will progress you. On to head Bogley, so it was the one fight that's been a death for a while. Yeah, that's the one uh Arita that uh, Zambi found and oh. then um okay. Tarashi found the again, I don't know if he found or someone else found, but he was the first one we saw him do it on a lot more of the fights. Yeah, and it and it, it's a little bit awkward in this game too, because if we find like let's say you can die to I don't know, the this the munchlax fight in the, the beginning right if you can die to that then like we're using that fight to to use moves from our pokemon as research it's tasks yeah so it's like all right we can lose to that fight is it still worth winning the fight because we can still get our research tasks is it worth doing different tasks maybe like we omit a pokemon altogether because of it so like, it's not just as simple as maybe other Pokemon games where you just have to worry about, okay, I'm going to have less experience. It's like all these compounding factors. It's pretty wild. And, and some of them are horrible. But like uh, Akari has, Akari or Raid, obviously depending on which character you choose, always starts with, uh, for the most part, a Mime Junior or a Mime, which is just, again, a, a setup Mon. So sometimes you have like a level two Bidoof out and this Mime is still just setting up on you. Like you're, you know, have a real team where it'll do like uh, up its defense. It'll try to go for some hypnosis. Maybe it'll miss the first hypnosis and then try again. And it's like, just end me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what is like. Is there any bits of the run that you are a bit weaker? Because like uh, into like what you enjoy or what you've enjoyed in the run. Because like that sounds like a bit inconvenient but it doesn't sound like the worst thing i guess no i i mean for me probably the worst is just the the very ending after kamado because then you're done with meaningful trainer fights because they throw in the charm fight which is just a very anticlimactic last trainer battle because you can use dialga or palkia whichever one you choose and charm only has two mons that both get one shot so it's just kind of like some rng segments where you have to catch the legendary which is uh, unfortunate, and then you have to do that fight, which Charm can just like hypnosis kill you um, and just waste your time. You'll never actually lose to Charm, but you can just get your time wasted. And there's a bunch of dialogue, so that's probably like the weakest part of the run because it's kind of just a little bit of luck and a lot of dialogue t towards the very end. Uh, also, like just this uh, Lord Battles made me realize um, the IRL seems quite popular. That won't be in the leaderboard round because it doesn't cover individual levels. So I just that's one thought that I just had. But either way, like, have you done any of the individual levels? I feel like Eddie could use a lot of them at one point. I <laughs> I did them before we actually had a leaderboard for them. And now that All we have right. a leaderboard, I haven't like I haven't done any of them yet. Um but yeah, like there's a there's a whole scene for it. It's really great. Yeah, yeah I haven't even, I haven't even looked all of them except for the last one, I think. But I haven't submitted any of them. They're 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 fun. Yeah, I haven't even looked at any of the like racing ones. I mean, looked at I've looked at these ILs because obviously they're somewhat pertinent to any percent. But they changed a little bit because the post game ones have more health, um, so some of the strats are slightly different. But I've even looked at all the the balloon racing. But I see a lot of people do those as well, which probably sounds pretty cool. Yeah, because that's the a only, fun one. The only game I can think where there's as big of an IL thing within Pokemon might be the, uh, the Poke Park games. Like, they love their ILs. But outside that, uh, individual levels are just not too common within Pokemon. So it's just a nice little thing, that as well. Uh, but yeah, I think... Unless there's any other things that you want to ask about, I mean, maybe, or if, I could, if there's anything that I've forgotten about, or that could be good to ask about. I again, I still need to look into reading this, but also keep putting it off. Yeah, it's the same for me. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, definitely a great game, very unique game for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a unique game, unique run, um, and I'm very excited to see where it goes. Just like I said, I after playing it day one or day two and trying to do runs and being like, oh, six hours, that seems pretty good. 
um seeing it at almost sub four now is just incredible <laughs> yeah it's quicker than sword shield which it is officially faster than sword <laughs> and shield yep which makes me both happy and slightly uh slightly sad as well <laughs> on the personal level <laughs> but yeah we are now going to move on to the side games and there's only the one only the one for the side games secure account uh, Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, any percent Wonder Mail English Emulator World Record, five oh four forty five. This is a thirty second improvement on it all on their previous world record, uh, and this now means that they have like the top eight times for overall, for like overall the any percent Wonder Mail English categories. I think it's the top yeah the top ten recorded times. I think. For the emulator version specifically, which is wild. Um, there's still, from what I've got, there's still some improvements, especially during this section where Chespin apparently dies four times, uh, which is. Uh, so for Mystery Dungeon, you have like the. I don't know what the, the term would be. You, you friend? Buddy? I don't know. But like the the part of the Pokemon that you go through the dungeons with from the beginning, typically in Mystery Dungeon games, uh, is Chespin in this run. It died four times when it was away from uh, away from secure. So definitely some improvement there. But overall, it seems like a quite an up and down run. So whether they're going to be looking to improve their time even further, uh, we will see maybe next month. And then Iron, finally, because I threw this in last minute. Oh yeah, so um, I think I've talked about this before. This is just a ROM hack of Fire and Leaf Green, called Fire and Leaf Green Plus. It's got <clears throat> a bunch of quality and burns, as you can see, instant text. And if you're keeping track of the experience, you'll see that I'm getting a lot more. So there's a toggle you can use to turn on the, uh, make the experience doubled, or you can even do uh, half experience or no experience if you really want to make it more difficult for yourself. And then there's also difficulty modes. So um, for this, we just use easy mode because you get the trainers are lower level. Um, and even with, even with a double experience, you get super over leveled. So, uh, yeah, no, this is, um, I've actually like been playing this a lot. Like I've been running, I ran all three starters. Um, the Bulbasaur run is very interesting. And then, uh, the Squirtle one was the last one that I, I looked at. And this one's really good because, um, a lot of people don't like playing Fire Red Leaf Green because of Mega Punch or, or Mega Kick specifically in vanilla. And this route doesn't get either of them. Uh, which is really good because I hate missing those moves. So uh, just that extra experience allows you to just make do with bite and water pulse, and you don't have to worry about uh, getting uh, an inaccurate move. So. So what you're saying is yeah. this should actually be the tournament, like should be the tournament, not the actual proper fire at leaf free. So it's no, more reliable. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a really, it's a really fun speed game. It would be really, it would be really fun to race. We've done, a f there's been a few races here and there. Head Bob and I did one at a marathon last year. Um, we kind of did a Bulbasaur race, um, a few of us a, a week or so ago. Um, it's definitely a nice fast run, um, and uh, it's, it's good for racing and just good for uh, messing around on if you need something, uh, a short speed game to. Fill a, fill a gap and if you're running between runs and running different games so yeah all oh, the bikes really fast too what is it is it mock bike speed or yes it... no acceleration mock bike speed all right jeez <laughs> fun time yeah that is the the last noted run of the month going to the past marathon runs sign off with the only marathon, um, this is Shining Pearl Any Percent by Nerd Squared, uh, version like 21, uh, 2134, which, uh, what's the world record again? Is it like a 14, I think, 14 or 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah. It's 14, but, uh, the sound was probably on, which is going to add a minute or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it's still like a very solid run for a marathon. Oh, Especially what can go wrong with this. Yeah. So that is very solid. Uh, ESA also happened. So this is Etienne's Red Catch Them All. Uh, 
Red catch them all, everyone in the half. <laughs> <laughs> like some of the stuff's wild with like how it glitches around. Oh yeah, Benji and Charleswell, who is the reader for this. Um, other runes at the marathon, other Pokemon runes. There was uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis, who's on commentary there, with gold, any percent, no save, corruption. And then I also did uh, Sword Tower of Two Fists. Don't get Urshifu. Yeah. It was great to see people in the marathon. First in person marathon for me as well, so that was very cool. How and was then, your run, Jordan? Uh, I run went well. I had a chance to watch it. It was like a bad time for me. But... Oh yeah, it was like the worst time for anyone in America. It was like I think yeah. 10, 10 a.m. Uh, Swedish time. Three, three or four in the morning for us. So, yeah. Yeah. But no, yeah, it was a good, it was a good run. Um, really, the only thing that was um, a pain RNG wise was Onyx, it, but even then that was a third oh, time, third try it ended up being like a 117 uh, something That's like solid. that yeah so yeah very solid time I was I was happy with the run <laughs> I could not be upset with that um, and yeah I released Bulbasaur as well so <laughs> I did what had to be done then there's also, uh, this is currently going on, but uh, all the Pokemon runs are being done. Uh, Frostbeak Halls, uh, being on. And there was a lot of Pokemon. Uh, Swift, uh, Swiftaloo with white to any percent, which is this run. Uh, there's also Skybills with Stadium Rental, uh, Stadium Rental Rando beat Erica, but. I don't get stadium runs because they do things in a weird order, so I don't know if that's the final gym fight or not. Um, does anyone know a bit more about the ordering for stadium or? I, I don't. Do not. That's fair enough. Let's just assume that was the last one. <laughs> Either way, though, um, I think there was. I think that was like a solid run overall from at least the bits that I saw. Uh, there was also Corvin May versus Frozen Flygon, Poker Clicker, Kanto Champion. Auto clicker codeless. A lot of Pokemon runs have started to get a lot of um, additional things. Like, still can say, what is this, a mystery dungeon game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, so many still categories are happening, which is both cool and a nightmare to say. <laughs> but this very niche situation that we are in with the podcast. Um, but May won that, so congrats to May. And then Swiftaloo once again with red any percent glitchless. Uh two ten forty five. I assume that, that sounds like a like a good time. Uh assuming it, I, I don't know if they I don't know if he did no instant text or not. Probably. Probably I don't know. Yeah, for a marathon it doesn't sound like in with instant text you'd want to do that. Maybe they should, maybe she showed it off. I can't remember. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Yeah, but then there was also with once again with Pearl any percent manipulus, which I watched a bit of that, but it was also very late, so I didn't catch the end of it. I a bit of that. And I didn't think to go back into the vault, so I don't actually know what the time fit there that I even finished it. So my apologies on that one. I assume it went all right. And oh, there was also now that I just remembered it, there was um. There's an incentive that was met, that was Pokemon. Don't remember what it was though. But I think it was like another like shorter run. Maybe or maybe like a glitch exhibition. I know at the end of Swift's Pearl run, she tried to do soft lock. So that might that be was it. really interesting to watch. So what, how you soft lock in, in that game, you have to lose to the Starly that you fight at the beginning when you get your Chimchar. So in order for that to happen, you have to, you can't knock the Starly into red health. Oh, and the Starly can't, wait. Yeah, you can't knock the Starly into red health, I think. And then, um, or it can't knock you into red health. One of the two, I think it's, yeah, it can't knock you into red health, yeah. otherwise it runs away or something like that. Um, so it's incredibly, it's, it's, it's a totally luck-based category. I, but there is a leaderboard for that, actually. I think, is it Ringo did a run of that? 
And um, I, I, from what I heard in the um, in the marathon, they were talking about it that he actually manips a specific. Ch he might he might be manipping a specific chimchar that has very low defense and HP for the soft lock, so that it can the Starly is able to kill him. But like half the time, he's just saying, "Please tackle me, please tackle me," because it's totally random as to whether the Starly uses growl or tackle. So. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, was, wait, was that Ringo doing like the minute stuff? Third or? Oh, when for the soft lock? Uh, no, yeah, when, like, when you were just talking about it now, or was that Swift? No, uh, Swift, I... Swift didn't minip it. She just, she just, she just saved before the uh, before getting it, and then tried it a few times, and then right. it didn't succeed because it is very luck based. <laughs> and you also, and also, Starly's stats are random as well, so yeah. Right. Also in. I just uh, with Benji saying that stadium runs don't go in order, but Skybills did, and did the first four and then plus another one that is an incentive. And then Rubenta saying you need a specific HP too, apparently. Hmm. Do you know what the HP is, Rubentus? <laughs> but in the meantime, I know I, I know it had 19 HP on in uh, in the in the record run. Which is the lowest HP, I believe. You can yeah, have. Although, can sounds... you have 18 on Chimchar? Yeah. No, I think you get, it's either 19 or 20, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, though. Yeah, in, in, in BDSP, I think I've never seen 18, so I think it's, it's, it's the same. So it's 19 or 20. Alright. But that is the last of the marathon runs. The last of the Wilson. Uh, Review. But yeah, for the upcoming. Right. It was, my stuff. apologies. It was it was Buster. Did I say Ringo it was Buster that did oh. the? Uh, yeah, my, my apologies. <laughs> Five fifty four is the time he got. So, if uh, Buster's watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. But then, either way though, this is the upcoming marathons now. Um, this is no reset X. Uh oh god. Le Petit Royce. That was awful. Oh. Uh, French, though. <laughs> okay. And if you scroll right down to the bottom, I believe. Uh, yep, around here, we have Pokemon Blue, any percent no save corruption, BTW Root uh, by Rock Depths. Etiquette, yeah. that sounds like an old school oh. run. <laughs> or route. That, is, that is the Brock Through Walls route. So that's... um. Ooh. I'm assuming the estimates around like the 20, 25 minute range. Uh, 40 minutes. 40. Bit of a buffer. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I don't know if I know which route that is then. But yeah, that's uh, that's going to be one of the older routes for sure. It's a fun route. I think it's probably better for a marathon just because with the marathon route or with like the, the current record route, there's a lot of stuff that you don't get to like see happen. It's just like you do a fight and oh, you won. And now you're a champion because it's like, you know, arbitrary code stuff. Yeah. And then there is one other marathon that I could find. And this is Buckeye Speed Bash 2022. And it is on the 27th at, uh, come up to like five to three in the morning for me. And it's a, uh, E.I. Kevin with Pokemon Yellow Glitchless Tass. And it's like the last run of the of that evening. Oh, so it's kind of like, it'll be Saturday evening for people in America. But, uh, yeah. That's the last run before there. Got a little bit of Tass. Uh, but yeah. I think cool things to mention. I didn't think to get the link. But uh, the Fire Red Leaf Reunion Tournament is being, being announced and the signups are still currently open. The deadline is March 18th and the first round draw will be on the 26th on this channel. Uh, there might also be a little uh, a little race. Uh, yeah, big race with everyone who wants to. Yeah, big race, not little at all. Um, there were like 10 people that did it, so it was a, it was a good time. Yeah, uh, what I've been told so far, and this was a couple of days ago, there is four or five at that moment, and I imagine there'll be a fair few more that might 
uh, join in once. Well, first off, just for the last minute sign-ups, essentially. So, uh, some people from there might join in. But then also, when like a, because it's uh, it sh should be a bit after. But I don't know if I don't know what's been happening in terms of like with uh, Kid Rocker telling people specifically the time that'll be happening. But I assume once it's been like a full confirmation, I imagine more people will be able to know if they're uh, free first or not. But yeah, imagine expect like what well, you said. It'll probably be like uh, probably be like a meeting like. Doodle or something to pick a time that works for everybody, and of course, yeah. you could rock see the draws. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that will also be on here, so look forward to that. Uh, there's also the there's also kind of like a community aura splits that's happening. Uh, it's happening offline. Um, and if you, you take a part in that, or. You not have um, the time in the end. I was going to, but I don't know. I don't know if I will. I don't know if um, I played a bit of 3DS this week, and my hands weren't really appreciative oh. of it. So I, I might, I might sit out. But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, it, it's not really like a thoroughly organized thing. Basically, anybody who wants to do it can. Um, there will probably be you know people hanging out in discords. Um, and discussing people who are live and stuff like that um and sort of like back in the fall with psr community day where like everyone was you know doing pokemon runs you'll probably see a lot more people doing auras tomorrow so if you're interested in that kind of thing stop by say hi cheer people on um hopefully we get to get to see a few pvs come out of the day that'd be really cool if you like mudkip you'll see a lot of it <laughs> yes you will <laughs> yeah um if you go into the 3DS Discord, at the very least, I, I'd like to hope maybe that there'll be people putting stuff in there maybe as well. But if not, there's Groucho in there who's been like kind of organizing it, so at the very least, message Groucho, who you can find in the 3DS Discord. And yeah, if you're interested or just want to also do attempts alongside it, feel free from the sounds of it. Just open entry. Or open entry of sorts. But yeah, on to the leaderboard roundup. And again, like usual, feel free to see it out to say anything that pops out as you see it. Dedicate an iron. And snap if you're still here, actually, because I don't have the stream up. Yep, you are still here, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, well. If in any percent English for Pokemon Red, the uh, Grogear, 120.643, within two seconds. I'd like to say that's getting close, but also uh, when it's a minute 20 long run, yeah. seconds a long time. <laughs> oh, it's a, like a, it's a long time to shave those last little bits off. And also, apparently, their fingers hurt. As per the comment. Um... Yeah, another notable thing with Grogear is the the catch them all run, uh, 14240. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion between Grogear and uh, GIFX, who's the one of the main routers of the current catch them all route, um, over in the the Red Blue Glitch channel that I've I've sort of been following. Uh, there seem to be quite a few route changes coming, so I don't think it's anything drastic, but you know, 10, 20 seconds here or there. Um, so, you know, it's very possible that we'll see maybe like a resurgence of um, that category in the in the semi near future. It would be interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, Wanley in eighth with a one fifty five twenty. An offline room. Uh, I know someone told me. Uh, I know Headball told me how to say the name, and I've. Completely blanked on it. What is, what is it? That's so bad. I think he goes by Matt, but like Mad, yeah. Mad. Yeah. Alright, cool. <laughs> Mad. One fifty-five thirty-nine as well in eleven. That I need to just remember that. I'm so bad with names though. I'm so sorry. Uh, Kurt as well in six. Thirty percent no save corruption. 
1320. How popular is the yellow no safe corruption? Not very. It's a very uh, difficult run. There's there's one manip that's extremely difficult. So usually okay. it's one of those things people will do, put up a time and just stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I mean, just to, to the theme, the name a few times. Uh, the Nest Master, uh, at least going off the Crystal Time, uh, four seventeen. But also with the gold above, I think also there was red as well. Very good month for them. Oh, very good month as well for Hanley as well with a, a two hundred two forty. If I really free, wonder if that's in preparation for the tournament. Yeah, Juan Lee has been do, does these does fire early freeing off and on, um, but yeah, with the tournament coming up, I'm not sure is someone even in the tournament. I have to check, but if we signed up yet or not. But he's he's doing a lot of the weekly races. We have we usually do like races every week. Ah. Um, he's usually there. So one that interesting about Juan Lee, I don't know if this happened last month or the week before, is he did a run. Um, he missed the minute, but he got a shiny Squirtle, and so he just did a run with it, and then he got a shiny Snorlax. <laughs> wow. Later on. Which is pretty wild. It's wild indeed. Got a wave there with the, the Emerald World Record, but also Katniss in fourth with uh, 127.21, any percent English. One soul. Even, even, yeah, even Emerald's starting to get the, all the tags. Mapwing in seventh as well with a one twenty eight twenty five. Yeah, those those two I think did a race. There was a race with Amoeba, and yeah, they don't they don't run this very often because it's mm. a brutal category because of the the corruption. Yeah. That you need. You got the the platinum runs that were mentioned earlier. Um, our gold sold silver, uh, Bungie, with a solid three, fourth place. Yeah, solid fourth place, three thirty-six eighteen. Question mark. The common. And then Hypno Shark in fifth, uh, with the any percent version of the category. And DS three yes, two thirty-one twenty. Apparently Manipulus as well, based on the common. Got Etchy with that's a, that's Pokemon. A, that's a pretty crazy run <laughs> at the end. In Manipolis. Oh, how's it go? Do you know? Use the Gyarados like you do in, in Manip or in uh, in, in Glitchless, but it's obviously lower level going into red because you fight less trainers. And I believe it's beneficial to have a female Gyarados because then you use Attract on one of Red's pokes. So there's tons of runs where getting attracted is just awful, like Emerald or or the Johto games. But this run, you actually use it for yourself. Yeah, well, I'll get your revenge <laughs> somewhere. If you want revenge? That's the run to do. Yeah. Uh, Black two, white two. Uh, challenge mode English. Yes, two. Yes, Etchy with the three twenty forty two. Uh, Groucho with the three twelve thirty four in the. Alpha Sapphire, any percent. Well, tab there with the Ultras and old 3DS world record. Um, they're a bit of a uh, let's go there. Wave with six plays. Oh, yeah. 30334. Is. Oh, did, did Wave say that he was. I feel like I remember what you say about what he's going to focus on next. I don't know if it was Let's Go or not, though. I don't know if this just happened to be... Oh, yeah, this was a... Yeah, that was... Almost a month ago at this point. Yeah, this was... That was earlier. Not very good, though. Um... 
couple of people have submitted with the like, any percent with shield out uh, any percent with DLC on shield for the Japanese version. Uh, Ghost get getting a three or oh, four thirty five forty four, um, which is quite a fair bit off, I think, compared to the sword version and also compared to the English version. But I see that the board or the leaderboards got some runs on there now. Uh, yeah. uh, second for Sayukula with a 338.47 in 80% glitchless on Brilliant Diamond Japanese No Turbo. Legends Arceus. Hey everybody. Look, look at all the <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised there's not that many people who even tried Turbo, since I think there's more people who tried Turbo of uh, BDSP when it came out compared to Arceus. Um, I feel like most of the runs of BDSP are non-Turbo, though. Yeah, I know there's a few people. I uh, like there's some there's people that I watch. Um, like I know I watched Swift Shadow. I know he was doing Turbo when it first came yeah. out. I think there's I think there's like two total. <laughs> um, for um yeah yeah which i'm kind of surprised considering how much dialogue there is that there hasn't been like you know one or two other people who have been like maybe this will be more enjoyable than mashing you got time My, in uh... milliseconds oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's because you need the milliseconds for the individual levels board and i guess it just like goes across the entire um leaderboard like you can't set it per category i don't think but yeah i um I would do turbo except uh and this is actually a good thing for bdsp and not this game uh the controller i have that's a turbo controller has notches like a gamecube controller um and that i, I tried playing legends with it and it just completely ruins me <laughs> i i buy a similar not the notches though but i the analogs just feel way looser than a pro controller yeah. and i just cannot aim a pokeball to save my life if i use exactly. it exactly so. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> everyone wants the. For anyone that doesn't know, there there's actually sparked again today some timing discussions for Legends. Um, it's not really gone anywhere, which is why we didn't mention it. But one of the things that a lot of people want is the ability to start timing after you set options, so you can do things like set your camera sensitivity. I never changed my camera sensitivity from the default, and oh, I know it'll be better if I go higher. <laughs> but like, I just can't do it. At least in this game, it's not like I compare it to like uh, you know anyone who's played like an FPS, like a Call of Duty. If you crank up the yeah. sensitivity in a game like that, you are just like <laughs> spinning if you just touch it. At least in this game, it doesn't crank it up that much. The crazy thing is, if you turn on um, gyro controls and you turn it all the way up, then you can get some like crazy turning. But I don't think anyone wants to try that because that would be so hard to control. Yeah, also, just uh, I think in fourth, like it's Victor. That's Vic in Discord, right? Who's also been doing yes. a lot of routing. All right. That is yeah. Just, and, just another name I recognize. And just, and just, yeah, just some notes of Vic. Vic's actually got a very good time. His time is very deceptive for his 410. Like, his, up to, you know, we talk about there's a research tax that goes up to like the five stars. Up until that point, his time is actually very comparable to um, Alex Sand and mine's. So uh, he should get a big PB very soon. I know, actually, I, oh, sorry. I've I've watched Vic sometimes and they'll do they'll have runs like they, they very clearly have high standards because um yeah. I, I've seen runs of theirs when it when maybe like it was like the 420 range, they'd be ahead by like a minute or something going into the final section and just not wanting to finish the run, which I totally understand. Cause like if I'm expecting like I have a 414 right now and I'm I know I'm capable of a sub 410. If I'm 50 seconds ahead going into like area five, I'm just not going to finish the run. I, I, I'm the same way with, especially yeah. with this game because of how much the end game becomes a little bit more scripted now. Um, and plus mm. that all the dialogue at the end, it's like, do I want to skip dialogue for another hour to PB by 30 seconds? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was say, because I just looked at uh, Vic's profile. Seems like this is, their first speedrun game in general. 
it's interesting how this is brought in a whole, or what seems like a whole lot of different people compared to the other Pokemon games as well. Because, I mean, like, oh, Hulk's been actually a fair few, but typically Hulk's more PMT, I think of. Mm -hmm. And there's you Snap, the Vic, uh, like, one ninth, uh, Christus Auto. Chris, oh, Crisis Horus. I always uh, read it as Chris right away, too. Yeah. That's the first thing that jumps out to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I believe uh, they did some BDSP a bit, but just before Legends Arceus came out, I might be wrong with that. Uh, Zambi, Zambi came in with BDSP. But still, it's it's been cool seeing like some new people uh, that have come in who might not typically have done Pokemon experience. It's like, were you a Kingdom Hearts runner? Snap. I am a little bit of everything. What I do nowadays is I like I like routing games, so I just jump uh, around to new releases that are interesting for the most part the last few years. Okay. Um so prob probably the most overlap with some people would probably be from Kingdom Hearts because Edge did some King Kingdom Hearts three, uh I know Swift Shadows did a few Pokemon. He did mainly BDSP for a bit. He's from Kingdom Hearts as well. Um but yeah, that's kind of the main overlap, I guess. Yeah. Does it? You refer this to Kingdom Hearts? Gotta ask. Remember what podcast you're on right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> probably this. I, I've even looked at, you know, from some of the other Pokemon games too. That I've I've actually got a, a 3DS capture card on the way at Ooh. some point. Um, because I do want to look at some other ones. Because I, for me, Pokemon, I didn't play a lot of the 3DS titles or the DS ones because. Um, again, I'm a bit older, uh, so I played like Gens 1 through 3, and then I just didn't play anything until Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, so. Well, let me tell you this amazing DS Pokemon game called Pokemon Dash. <laughs> Absolutely amazing game. I would recommend you give that a try. Interesting. I have never heard of it, to be honest. Uh... <laughs> Not many people have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cur currently I'm playing through Pokemon X. I just on my own casual time though. I, I mean, I, 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 to me X is a game. <laughs> <laughs> so to, it does like at least speedrun wise. I know you say you play through casual, but speedrun wise, there is some interesting stuff in that run. And yeah, no hands as well in chat. Uh, has been doing it as well. Uh, yeah, so stadium. Just congrats to anyone who finishes a stadium run. Just well done to you all. <laughs> and there's Master popping up again. Uh, uh, I did not know poke like new Pokemon stuff. I never played it, but I heard like um, I don't remember like a couple weeks ago. I didn't even know there's like a leaderboard and that, that you can like take pictures to like climb up the leaderboard. Not necessarily speedrun lead, but I know some people who do runs have been also doing that, and I thought that was pretty cool. Again, I've never played the new Pokemon Snap, but that was interesting to hear that you can do that stuff. I've not played a Snap game at all. Neither the old one or the new one. I feel like I might be missing out, but also, time, time is an issue. <laughs> I think I've played the, I've probably played the OG one, like, at some point, but it's one of those games I like, you know, I can watch it and get the same enjoyment as of playing it, so. Mm -hmm. uh, well, looking at this, did you? Congrats to anyone who finishes Coliseum and RxD as well. Actually, Rune-chan, with the... Uh, Japanese world record there, uh, eighty percent with Japanese. Uh, I think there's two runs on that board, and I think like compare it to compare it to like the English time. It, like the English times are four twenty five. Why I didn't put it on there, but still, like, oh, put in the noted runs. Uh, but still, congrats to Rune Chan with the four fifty five fifty seven. Uh, well, the reason why I didn't include the Beat Dark Ride, uh, Beat Dark Ride, No Wonder Mail English emulator for Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, Explorers of Time slash Darkness. Uh, that is the only run on that board. But 9, 12, 08. So, congratulations there. 
Uh, Second for secure account in Rescue Team DX. Uh, any percent no win the mail. With a 247.56. Couple of Pokemon channel runs. Fifth place as well for Hayden IRL with a 4607. Uh, Poker Clicker, uh, Tutorial Normal Codeless, Bigfoot's Corner with a 105.6. Pokemon Unbound, uh, World Record 80%, version 2.0. Silver That's a very official. Interesting game. What is Pokemon Unbound? So it's a ROM hack, Fire Red ROM hack using the complete Fire, Fire Red upgrade um, engine. Um, we actually had Bob initially routed this, and for Community Day, he, I, and another runner, we raced it. Um, me and the other guy went in blind. We just had had Bob's notes. Um, it's a very difficult run. Um, it has since been up. Like obviously, this is a new version, 2.0, so it's not really a comparable run to the previous one. I believe the new version is a little bit harder. So, but uh, the length is kind of deterring me from wanting to go back. But you, um, your starter choices are Gibble. Oh, I don't remember the others. I, I, can... I think there's um, whatever whatever the first stage of Matang is, I think is one of them, and then I don't remember oh, what the other one is. Yeah. That's the other second two. <laughs> but uh, oh. there Gibble go. is really solid. Just don't go anywhere near Ice Pokemon, and you're good. Yeah, Larvitar is the other one. Um, Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, th also this looks cool. I like the I like the look of it all. But yeah, the ROM hacking ROM hacking has come a long way in in Gen three. So uh, there's some pretty neat hacks out there. Seven hours though. Also, that costume looks really interesting. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> Fire Red Leaf Green Plus. Was, was that all? Oh, I'm going to assume uh, who knows was at a different time. Actually, I don't know. All those are different run dates. Ah, cool. Yeah, this got a lot of traction. I, I think um, one, someone, a couple of people wanted to start running Bulbasaur. So a few of us started routing that. And then I think Head Bob went nuts one day and just routed a couple more alt mains. And then I recently did Chiding as well. So uh, yeah, I just like routing even just alt mains of these ROM hacks. It's it's very niche, but it's a lot of fun just kind of figuring out how fast these Pokemon can go. And it's it's a super fast run anyway. So just getting a, just getting a time down is, is kind of fun. And then, uh, yeah. The Venusaur route is actually quite interesting. Um, you get the Sludge Bomb TM, which is normally a post game move, is actually available in Sylph. So Venusaur actually has a really solid stab move for the mid to late game. And if you're able to get Hidden Power Psychic, um, that helps a lot. And so um, obviously anyone who's run this game, Manipping, is like a one frame trick on a moving target based on your trainer ID. And you have to get Psychic Hidden Power. And it has to be like, I think 45 base power for it to even be worth it, but preferably 60 or better. Um, so that's obviously very difficult to do, um, but the, theoretically the fastest time in this in this main with this main would get in power. Theoretically, <laughs> yeah. Keyword. But what's kind of yeah? What's kind of nice is like Bulbasaur is only about seven six minutes behind Squirtle, whereas in any percent it's like twenty minutes behind. So. Uh, it it definitely I think it definitely benefits from the the quality of life improvements more so than the other two starters. Just does this use the the same program as normal fire early free for calculating uh, for the start for, yeah. for the starter? Yeah. Yes, it's exactly the same. Except everything's faster, so you can go better you know, aim for a bit earlier a frame window, which is nice. Does you, that you can have? Get, you can, you can... Oh, there we go. Yeah, because you, you get the running shoes right away, so you can actually get to your starter in a minute, whereas in, in any percent it would be like two minutes. So resets are very fast. Right. 
Yeah. That's I was just gonna ask, does it have a hidden power calc on there? Or like because they know the the Coliseum one and mm -hmm. XD one. Yes does. it does. The there's two versions of the minute program. There's one that has flow timer built in, which I use generally for any percent. A lot of us use for any percent, but that yeah. one does not have hidden power. So there's a, the one the other method is to have flow timer and a separate uh, Java program which has the uh, the starter calculations. That's a bit more cumbersome because you have to use two different things. Yeah. But that one is the one that has hidden power. So um, I actually, when I was trying runs with hidden power, I was actually had both of them uh, open, and I was entering my trainer ID twice. It was it was a lot. Oh. But uh, it wasn't too bad. That does, that does seem interesting. Oh, well, for how like us coming together, or can potentially come together. Want to put in mm -hmm. the full effort for hidden power? Yeah, the calculation for hidden power. I looked into it. It's very, very interesting. Um, it's actually kind of weird for because you're aiming for psychic hidden power. I think you you're. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but for psychic hidden power, you your speed and your special uh, and your special stats all have to be like we like. I think special stats need to be odd, and your speed needs to be even. And if that's the case, you will always get psychic hidden power, or almost always get it. So you can you can kind of play around with the minute program to try to give yourself the best odds of getting it. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to kind of route that into the into the route. It was uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm kind of I'm kind of rambling on here. So. Yeah, no worries. It does, I mean, it's interesting stuff to be fair. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. To figure that out. And then finally into the, the category extensions. Um, I assume Wartab is still being busy. Is it Wartab that was originally sorting out the category extensions? Like spinning them up? I think so, yeah. And Wartab has been. Well, Wartab normally is very busy, to be fair. But the Gen 2 one, I guess, it still hasn't been done. Oh, like, well, at least when I was checking, because. I got a bit of inside knowledge. Finally took the effort to make it so I don't have to change this sheet every single time. <laughs> it's ran. <laughs> finally, I finally organized it. Um, but it did seem like there wasn't a separate one for like gold, silver, and one for crystal. So I assume War Tab is. Oh, I don't know. maybe at this point it might just can't be bothered, which I wouldn't blame him. To be fair, it seems like it's a lot of effort to sort all, to set it all up. Either way, um, there is Jimmy with the 80% alt language Italian manip world record, 1 hour 32 oh, seconds. God. And also with the world record for in platinum for manip plus any percent, 310.55. Got Rubentus in second with manip plus any percent for hard gold soul silver. The two sixteen oh seven. Uh, poke. Yeah, that run apparently was very close to record, so very close for Juventus. Oh yeah, it looks like eight seconds off. Very close indeed. Oh, and then Juventus there, eight seconds off. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then black white poke life, uh, pokey life with a three twenty nine oh nine manipulous English world. A lot of manipulous world records. <laughs> and then a mega chad with uh, the baton pass world record of 510.51. Uh, both gem with the trade on main knock towel uh, in Auras. Million Soul Shield category extensions. Uh, <laughs> yo, uh, Japanese Geo Shu uh, world record, Poke Hoshan, with a 127.28. All time. That is, is that better than English? Uh, well, actually, no. I think, no, I think it should English be a 120. A little bit better. 126? Is it? I think it's a 126, yeah. All right. It's Jordan's run. You yeah, you, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this relies on memory. Memory, no. <laughs> memory does not exist. <laughs> However, though, actually. A new get to Calyrex world record, A Pujo with a 170 20. The Japanese runners are taking over the Calgary extensions. I want to point this out. 
<laughs> wow. They have been taken to... over. It's cool. But like right. they have all the get like they have all the flex world records. They've got the get to calibrate world record. The only thing well, to be fair, they've got they could easily switch to English. <laughs> like they could do anything at this rate. All like it's interesting to see how it's happening. Happening in real time. Need more runes. Need to, need to fight back the uh, the Japanese people who are very very good at these games. But yes, uh, brilliant diamond shining pearl. Uh, Yoshida with the eighty percent no out of bounds uh, Japanese world record forty six forty six. Seems like it has some notes there as well. So if you want to go to the calorie attentions and do the run. I assume the probably notes are probably in Japanese. Hey, if you can read Japanese, there you go. Uh, boss, uh, boss rush. Um, how is that? Is that? Is it just like literally like this is like post game, or like you or like yeah. you've done the game? Like, okay, yeah, Arceus is in there. Yeah. It's basically a, um, I don't remember how many there are. I guess you can count. Was that eight? So it's basically doing yeah. the eight yes. <laughs> individual levels for the boss fights back to back to back. So it includes the movement and stuff. Um, or no, I guess it does have to be back to back to back, but it's timed using the adding of in-game time. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Snap. Yeah. That comment. <laughs> I, I was really oh bored God. one day, clearly. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I was just waiting for my food. I was honest, and I'm just like, well, I got like 50 minutes to kill, so <laughs> I decided to do that. Oh, now I get it, yeah. <laughs> hey, congrats on the win. <laughs> yeah, Katie was too slow. <laughs> Went for the forgetting my drink skip. Oh, that sounds sad. <laughs> Yeah, they always do that. I don't know why. <laughs> the quality comment right there. Yeah, that is a, I was, a top quality. I was gonna do some. I was gonna do a bee cleaver run yesterday, and I was like, oh, I'm just curious what what you do for the fights at the end of the game. And I just spent the entire time reading the comment. <laughs> <laughs> How would bee cleaver compare to um, in terms of the research tasks? and everything it would just be it would be very similar to the any percent i assume uh kind of you so you need 500 to progress the story at first and then you just do nothing else but go so you oh okay yeah so you, you probably normally know after cleaver like it depends like 2000 to 2500 again it varies on routes um so you basically just like cut out like 1500 points of research oh nice. what a lot Also, Cash Spirit Tomb, 64130, oh, yeah, 64136, Dreams of Grandeur. That sounds like madness. You have to get all the wisps, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure I'm not sure how long it's, because I know I've seen some catch them all which is not on the boards yet, because I know that one's probably more popular than Spirit Tomb. Um, so I don't know actually how long that takes. Like, again, I know there's a lot of resources, like uh, someone made a map that has like, screenshots if you hover over it and stuff like that where everything is I think it was like what 17 ish per area something around there so it's not mm -hmm. too bad um but i'm not sure what this all entails i haven't really read the rules of this so well, you know what <laughs> we can quickly look uh oh, how do you get it okay you just go through slc changing the layout messes with me all right so capture all 108 wisps, and then ends on the first frame of the capture success firework. Okay, so you would so this basically just needs five stars of research, so you can actually get the last area, and then you just collect the wisps. Yeah. I'd imagine this would actually be shorter than any percent, like with people actually want to push this, because I would assume getting the wisps is shorter than the dialogue at the end of the game, so. Probably. I'd be willing to bet that, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's other dialogue involved with 
catching spirit tomb i have not finished my casual file of everything so i uh i deleted like... my casual <laughs> file yesterday by accident <laughs> oops <laughs> i'll deleting a different file for us for a speed run and just deleted my casual file i mean like, well, hopefully hopefully you weren't too far yeah. into it at least for, for me i wouldn't be that sad about it at least because i don't think i've i'm nowhere close to complete the decks yeah I've, i think i had like a hundred pokemon which i probably had about 60 just by beating the game yeah so wasn't too bad i will admit i was just i was tempted just for like we have the quote like we have quotes at the beginning on like the intro i was just tempted to put a command and it'd be the command that would just show that that vod as your quote etiquette for this week i was no. tempted to do that <laughs> Alas, though, I decided I probably shouldn't. Um, but then, but yeah, with the last couple of category extensions, uh, Falkush with the mini game champions for Stadium 2, very hard nine tokens, uh, six minutes, eight seconds, point nine. Um, and then, that category extensions, Magic Art percent on the N64, High Piper with a 1933. That is it. That is everything from the leaderboard round. Oh. We've gone through the entire leaderboard round of skipping things, but you know what I'm, you know what I mean at this point. Hopefully, uh, that is the last thing with the podcast. Um, that. What is the? Uh, what's the link to your Twitch? <laughs> oh, uh, can we find you? It is O with O H H underscore snap. I was good with podcasts. I would have prepared that already. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So go follow Snap. Especially because I assume, are you going to be doing more Legends of Arceus? I assume to try and get your world record back. Yeah, yeah. I was doing some. I actually have a faster time. It's not world record though, but I had one this morning, so uh, it's pretty good pace. So. Yeah. As well, like mentioned, the sub four will be happening. Probably, you're expecting two weeks for someone. So yeah, it could even happen tomorrow. Uh, who knows? It's actually a lot of runs can be on pace, so we'll see. Yeah. Is that? Uh, there is also. Let me make sure I put the S on the end because I normally forget. All etiquette, follow iron, follow myself if you want as well. Um, the next podcast will be on the 2nd of April, assuming there's nothing else on the 2nd of April. I don't think there is anything though, just in general. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, try to think what I mean, yeah, because I mean, at this point, there's no new games coming out, so who knows what will be happening over this next month or so. Uh, etiquette. Uh, all right. Do you have anything else that you want to add? Um, no, nothing, nothing much. No. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, have a good rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Stay safe. Take care. Oh wait, who's live? Who we're gonna read? <laughs> we'll figure this out in a second. But anyway, uh, in a bit. <laughs>